This is that structure I was discussing in the last video. Um, the idea of a structural element made out of uh, maybe tubular steel, but uh, looking kind of like a tornado. Um, very easy to construct. If we were to go out to the actual shape, it's created um, by using three different um, circles or curves. And there's a little bit of a nuance of an issue of generating this form. Um, in this case, these forms are based on um, three arcs. And I'm not sure if I can easily show you this. Let me see if I can isolate the, oops. If I click on this form, let's see if I can, uh, there it is. If so we go over here, you'll notice that this form is actually created by an arc that doesn't quite touch. And that allows the form to be generated completely as one continuous surface around. Now I'll come back and explain, or that'll be clear when we go and do this in another form of geometry. So I wanted to show you that setup, because um, this is the one we're actually using. But I wanted to, um, let me cancel out of that so it'll go back to normal rendering. I wanted to show you another technique for building it, and then what the inherent problems might be with it. So we can start by, I've created three levels. If we were to look at these from an elevation, um, I've got them 0, 28, and then 50. And I'm going to go back to that 3D view. And I'm going to start building another circle on the first level. I'll set that level. I'll put a circle on it. Um, four feet is a good starting number. I'll select the next level. Put another circle on it. And then set the top level and another circle. So if we grab all three of these now and make our form, what happens, what Revit or yeah, Revit does is it divides these two forms into two separate elements. So if we go ahead and I divide that surface. I need to actually go over and divide the other surface also. Before I apply the pattern. And it's not necessarily a problem except that in this case, um, if the pattern is not doing anything complex, um, it may align perfectly at those two points. And you don't have an issue. But you can see that this is alignment issues depending on how the shape and form is created and the way you align components. And I especially find that troublesome when I wanted to do a few other manipulations with the form. And in this case, the form that I used, I also made it so that the horizontal elements had a twisting, a spiraling to them by the nature of taking the grid rotation and just adding a 10 degree um, twist to it. So you can either create, um, and the problem I had with this form, obviously, as you can see, just it comes very close, but it doesn't quite touch each other on the circle. As I tried to close this gap up tighter and tighter, I found that the circle would snap to a radius, and that was problematic. So um, you can do it either way and uh, work out the issues as you see, see fit to do this. So let's just take a look at what the actual element that I used to create the, the individual element here. Let me... And this is just an adaptive component. And we'll go ahead and edit that family so you can take a look at what it is. In this case, it's just like we're using the space when we've created space frame trusses in that in the past. We have our adaptive component. And in this case, I've created a rectangular extrusion in one axis on the top and bottom. And then transverse to that, the major column, and this vertical one, is a round tube. So you can help you see that better if we go back to this this rendering view. You can see how those elements um, come together. And I'm seeing a little bit of error between the, the two overlapping forms where one is escaping out of the other one. But it doesn't seem to affect it much in once it's imported for rendering. So we'll go back and take a look at that view. So the idea here is we're going to um, insert that shape, however you decide to design it, um, to be a feature element inside of this tall um, structurally glazed um, 
atrium or entry foyer, whatever you might want to refer to it as. So take a shot at that and impress me with something cooler looking.